Okay, so as a number of you have expressed some concern and confusion about the engineering notebooks, I want to share an example of what was done in the past. And although this one was done on as a paper notebook instead of as an electronic version, much of what is covered in here should answer a lot of those questions, I hope. So you may know Matt, our... Uh, our tech in the department. This is uh, based off of his final project from class when he took robotics. And the goal of his project was, as you can see here, to create a pick and place solution for the U-Bends on a heat exchanger using the Mitsubishi robot. You have to rotate every other part and develop a gripper design as well as do the part presentation solution. And so he has given me permission to use this log that he's created. And as you can see, because it's paper, there's a table of contents here. His name was on the front of it. But as we dig into his notebook, you'll note things like he's reiterating what the objective of the project was, what the deliverables for the project are. And this can be done for lab assignments just as easily as it was done for his final project. And so the objective of the lab is to move five points, to do a loop, whatever that objective is. The deliverables would be the video of a working solution that implements the skills required. Um, he has his plan on when he expects to do stuff here. Um, one of the things for the electronic journals that you don't need to worry about is this white space comment. If you're doing a paper version, it's generally not a good idea to leave that white space there. You'll notice he has tried to use color in his to indicate different parts, which is, is a really good thing to do. Um, he has some quick and simple sketches. His handwriting is not great, but it's not bad. It's, it's legible, um, and that's all that really matters. It doesn't have to be perfectly neat printing. You'll be typing yours, so that shouldn't be a problem. The downside to typing is that you're not gonna be able to easily draw. And if that's the case, that's fine. You can draw it and take a picture of it and insert it that way if you want. Or you can try to sketch it with the mouse uh, if you wanna use PowerPoint, which I do a lot of the time actually, to do quick, simple renderings of something. Uh, sometimes that works real well as, as an alternative solution to being able to physically draw things in. One of the advantages of doing the electronic solution instead of having you do a traditional marble notebook type of log is that I wanted you to be able to do screen captures of things you've done in, your, in the RT Toolbox 3 software where you're having problems and you figured it out or you want to cut and paste chunks of code that you maybe want to reuse and then annotate. It's a lot easier to do that electronically than it is uh, by hand. And you'll see here later in his, his notebook that he has uh, actually written out his program line by line. And I don't really see a whole lot of value in that from the point of view of a learning activity. From an archival point of view, it's helpful. But if you can just cut and paste that text in, how much easier would that be? Uh, so, yeah, he's using color again here. He's dated when the entry is, mentioning what's going wrong, what's going right. Uh, he's started sketching designs for his grippers, his layout of the cell. And you'll notice here, all he has is a, a square indicating where the robot's going to be. That's fine for an engineering log like this. Here's a flowchart of what he's planning to do, showing some good overall logic for his program. You can do what he did, sketch it out on paper. And like I said earlier, take a picture and insert the picture. You can create it in Visio, PowerPoint, Word, directly in uh, your electronic journal software. I don't really care where it's coming from, so long as you are following the general concept of the process because I want you to be able to lay out coherently what are you trying to do, what are the steps involved, so that when you have a problem, I'm going to ask you, okay, 
your logic isn't working. Where's your flow chart of how you laid out your logic? And if you tell me you don't have one, I'm going to say, go, go create one, come back. And once you've got that flow chart done, then we can talk about where you may have made a mistake or an assumption that was incorrect. Some more examples of him sketching out ideas and concepts, trying to come up with a functioning solution. Note in here that he actually listed something that didn't work. The log does not have to be only of successes and what worked, but also what you tried that failed so that you know why you chose not to do something. Uh, he actually did this in red, which is even better, but the fact that he said, hey, this didn't work is really important and extremely powerful. Here is a layout that he did of the wiring for the controls for his parts feeder. This is a good start, but not ideal in that things like the sensor information, the part number is missing. So, hey, great, we know there's a part, there's a sensor there, but what sensor is it? You, you can cut and paste the website address for things you found online if you want, or you can just list the part number. It doesn't really matter. Same thing for the wiring diagram. Hey, great, but you're going to need pin numbers. You need to know where things plug into the Arduino board from the motor controller or whatever, and you want to capture all of that information as well. He's doing some work on his logic for his Arduino here, so that's good. Once again, if you're doing a paper version, this white space is not ideal, but we're not worried about that for ours. Uh, going back to some mechanical design issues, you'll note that is not a very good circle. It doesn't matter. The fact that it looks more like an egg than a circle is fine. It's giving the requisite information to create this adapter. And remember, this is a notebook for the process. It's not necessarily a part print that you're going to have to do. If this was his part print that he's turning in, we'd have problems. So this is what his Arduino code looks like. You'll note he has put some comments in, which are very, very good and helpful. This red text here was another problem he ran into. And so once again, he's showing what didn't work and what he had to do to potentially go fix it. He has labeled his point names so he knows where they are physically, which is really, really helpful. Uh, however, it would have been nice if he also had put a sketch to accompany this so that it was obvious of what what his version of above first placement, where is the first placement, where is the second placement, things like that. Here's another example. He said, hey, stepper motor would not move when set up in the lab, so he's indicating that there's a problem and what should be done. Uh, I do want to make sure you are aware that while this log was well done, it's not perfect and is only an indication of what could be done. This would be a B-ish level log. It could have been better. Some of the problems that have, have been identified if they were fixed would have gotten a better equivalent grade. The call outs I have here also are not everything that needs to be done to make this better. The rest of this video is going to be an overview on how to use OneNote. Um, it's a Microsoft product, and if you don't want to watch that or you are using something else, you can go ahead and stop this now. So if you log in to your Office 365 UM Mail account, in addition to getting your email, you have the option to launch additional applications. Up in the left corner, there is this grid next to the word Outlook. If you click on that, it will eventually bring up a list of applications. Click on OneNote. You'll see that the system refreshes and brings up a list of notebooks available. I have some other stuff that I've done previously. You will want to create one called Tech4474. And in parentheses, please put your last name. And so it would be something like that. And you don't have to do this completely through the web interface all the time. However, I have noticed in experimenting that you do need to do your initial creation of your notebook 
in the web interface or you run the risk of not being able to easily get it to be shared across multiple devices. So I now have an empty notebook called Tech 4474 Bariso. I can start typing stuff. I can create sections. So I'm going to create a section called Lab Activities. You do not have to call it Lab Activities. I'm going to also create a second one which I do suggest you specifically name as section. There it is, new section. My bad. Name it file projects so you can have a lab notebook that is for this class, that is specifically for the lab activities or for the final project. And I can come in here, I can type in, you'll notice it puts the date that I started the note uh, but I'm going to say demo. I can click down in here and start typing. If you hold down the control key and scroll, you can get everything to zoom just like normal. I happen to be using Chrome, um, so that's how you do it in Chrome. You can hide and delete things. I'm not going to worry too much about that. But as you add additional notes, you can click wherever you want them, come back, move them around as needed. You can draw if you do this on your tablet or your smartphone. It's going to be easier to draw as you can imagine. However, I can still draw with my mouse. I can select stuff, I can erase stuff. Note it did erase the entire arrow, uh, not just a portion of it, but that's fine, depending on what I wanted. I can change colors, I can change line weights. This is not meant as a tool to do graphic design. This is for you to help take notes, circle stuff. Uh, you can do a screen capture if you want. So I'm going to start RT Toolbox and eventually it'll load. So I'm going to open something. I'm going to open up my splines, sure. So I'm opening up an existing project. And for argument's sake, if I want to do a screen capture of something, so we want to screen capture this, I'm going to hit Alt, Print Screen, which allows me to capture just this program, come back over to here. I can do control V for paste and it will insert that image for me. Deselect that, let's see go there, that's fine. You'll notice because I had text there and that's what was selected when I did the paste, that's what it pasted over basically. Uh, but I can insert screen captures. There is an option to insert uh, audio tracks if I want. I can insert a link. So that is the auto ID lab. I can insert that if I want to for whatever reason. Uh, but if I want to archive links, I can do it that way. I can also come up here and go to, uh, here's the university's research page, cut. I can also paste it like that. So you have, you have a choice of how you paste links. I'm not expecting you to have to do that all the time for this class, but it is there as an option. You can load files. So insert as an attachment. I'm going to insert test file. You have to choose it. Sometimes you can drag, sometimes you can't. I can never remember which. Oh, so here we go. Perfect. And you'll note it inserted it there. If I didn't have that selected, if I was selected randomly, it's going to try to insert it randomly. All right. Uh, so pretty straightforward. I can do math with this. I can create forms, 
What I'm expecting from you guys for this is something more to the effect of, and then you can delete everything. You want to be careful about that because, that's interesting. Should have let me, I guess it wasn't going to let me delete everything at once. There it goes. So I could delete things if I needed to. What I expect to see in here are notes about how to do certain activities and comment and uh, how to do certain activities and procedures within the software. Uh, if you have, are having problems and you want to document the problem you're having, here's a way to do that potentially. Uh, you can send that to me that way. Um, the other thing you will need to do is share this and click on the share button and list my email address there. So the K Barisso at, mem yep, and that's me. And you can send that and I will receive an email saying that you are sharing that with me. And so I will get an email that looks like this, that allows me to open up your shared OneNote notebook. And this next section will show the application on an Android device. I'm going to open up the OneNote application. You'll see it goes to any previous stuff I've done but I should be able to get this to refresh and it should show my new notebook. All right, so I had to go under more. I've logged into my notebook. There it goes. This is the same notebook that I created on the website. So I can create a new section from here. And so as you can see, I can type like normal, I can draw. I can draw poorly. I can do things like add grid lines to it to make it easier to view things. Notebook. I can change settings. I'll let you explore that. I have the option to add video, audio files, pictures, whatever, attachments, so on and so forth. Okay, so hopefully this has made some sense. If you have questions, feel free to ask. However, I am relatively new to using OneNote in this manner as well. And so you might wanna check with Google before asking me. Hopefully that makes sense. That's all I have for today. Thanks for watching.